So this is the pig lab station, what we're going to do. And the first skill we're going to do is um, a field amputation. Now, the pig anatomy is slightly different. Well, it is quite different from the human anatomy. First of all, just to get your head around, is that the, this is not the knee joint of the pig, that's the ankle joint. And so the knee joint's up here. And so when we're doing an amputation, when we're looking for a single bone type um, closure, we're going to go quite up here when we do an incision. Now, what equipment are we going to need for a field amputation? Scalpel, trigger saw. And uh, forceps. Forceps, forceps. Yeah, okay. Tourniquet. And a tourniquet, okay. Um, you might need two tourniquets for the big young person with a big thigh, the big quadzilla. Um, the other thing you're going to need is obviously um, a, a patient preparation. Um, if you're going to take someone's limb off, it's probably one of those things where you're going to want to take a picture of it, talk to the SRC, get as many people in the boat before you take that limb off as possible, talk to the people around you, prepare the patient, and you're going to need to anaesthetise them for it, aren't you? Okay. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to get your patient preparation, your equipment ready, your procedure plate, and what you're going to do is as efficient as possible and your assistant briefed. And then what you, I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to quickly talk through it and then you guys are going to do it. You're going to um, uh, prepare your uh, um, patient position where you're going to do your incision. And so if the knee joint's here, you're going to need to go through that muscle, through skin and muscle with scalpel, and you're going to go to bone and stay on bone. Okay, if it's good enough for orthopedic surgeons, it's good enough for us. Very simple. And then once you're on that bone, you're going to clear the tissue behind that bone, because remember that um, limb might be trapped, and you might not get circumferential access to that limb. You're going to pass a faucet behind the bone, and you're going to grab your jiggly saw, and then you're going to pull it through, and then you're going to do the bone, uh, the jiggly saw through the bone. A word of warning, this sort of environment, you're going to be sweaty and hot, probably you're going to be sympathetically charged. Um, it's very easy to inadvertently touch this jiggly saw, okay? This jiggly saw is like a cobra. It's going to bite you and go through your gloves at the first chance it gets. Treat it like a snake. Don't touch the sharp bits at all because as soon as you rip a hole in your glove, it's going to make your procedure much, much harder or you're going to give yourself an injury. So treat it like a snake. And then you're going to put that through, use the jiggly saw with handles. If you can't use the jiggly saw handles, you can use forceps to grab the end through the bone as efficiently as possible, and then you're going to complete the skin bridge through back through the tissue, and then you're going to obviously extricate the patient um, some sort of stump dressing on the end, okay? Everyone happy with that at this stage? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass you a scalpel in a tray, mm -hmm. your forceps, your jiggly saw. You're going to assist, you're going to come around here, and you're going to do your incision through this. And I want you to talk yourself through, through it, all right? Talk to everyone else around, come up close so you can all see, sure. and fixate that limb. Okay, so, Above the knee joint, single Identify bone. my landmarks, prep my patient, warn them, warn everyone around me, I've applied my tourniquet, I've sedated the patient, given them some ketamine, and I'm ready to roll. So, with the scalpel, I'm going to make just a good, let's pull that back, it's a good incision right down to bone. Remember, it's a guillotine amputation. We're not doing fancy flaps or anything else. The surgeons will fix it all up when they get to theatre, okay? This is a straightforward guillotine type in, in, amputation. Okay. And when you're doing the removal of this soft tissue, if you make a pathway that makes it as easy as possible for the jiggly saw to not get caught on that soft tissue, it'll make the division of the bone much more efficient. Okay, so I've exposed bone now. Beautiful. Okay, you're going to pass your forceps behind that. You might even include your skin bridge or your dissection a bit further back. Yep. So it makes that jiggly saw a little bit more efficient and easier to put your forceps behind. So and cutting on through. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Clear that a little bit as well. <coughs> forceps through first and then passing jiggly saw into open forceps. Okay. Some forceps. Beautiful. Now stop there at that point. If you haven't got these other things prepared, your assistant can then do this. I'm going to pass that to you, your system, and you're going to pass that through to him so he grabs it with his open forceps. Okay. Excellent. Pull through. Okay. Now, have you guys done any tree pruning or anything with a similar sort of tree prune type saw? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about the mechanics of what's easier to do? Yeah. So if you start off doing with your hands almost together and doing a nice oblique cut, and then change that to a real flat cut using the whole blade, tell me whether you think one's more efficient than the other. Yeah, right, I can see. 
Yeah. It's more efficient to do it wider like that. Yeah, it's always much more efficient for you using muscles to do it when it's better. Beautiful, okay. So you, what you've done now is you've completed the bone uh, division. Yep. Be careful, there might be sharp fragments of bone. You don't want to give yourself a bone stick at this stage. Mm -hmm. There might be some oozing through that bone because obviously the tourniquet won't cause a complete um, hemostasis through that bone. Yep. And now at this stage now what you're going to do is you're going to complete that skin bridge through. <coughs> so your system can hold that distal limb. And when you use your scalpel, use the curve of the blade to do all of the work rather than sort of the tip of the thing. And when you're cutting, you want to cut away from yourself rather than towards yourself, okay? Just be careful. Yeah. Um, for us non-surgeons, it doesn't necessarily come naturally. Okay. If you're cutting towards your assistant, they might also be lesser than assistant because they'll start to gradually move their hands away. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, that was really well done. Awesome work. Feel the amputation, legs off. <coughs> patient, stop dressing, go.